Hello, I'm Solar Loon, and this is, um, I guess, I, um, like what? Well, this is a game that I've uh, worked on. I uh, made a while back, back in 2011, before I was known as Solar Loon, or 2010, uh, before I was known as Solar Solar Loon, before I was, um, before I had a YouTube page or anything. Um, yeah, so, well, at least not online. I, I wasn't known as Solar Loon. Okay, so anyway. This is a 2D game. Um, it was gonna play kind of like Little Big Planet, where you can make uh, kind of a world to explore, but it was gonna be a, a side-scrolling kind of a Metroidvania, Met Metroid, I guess, Castlevania kind of approach to uh, the game. And so you would make your own levels. So um, I have a block palette here. I'm in edit mode, as you can see up here. Um, there's a menu up here that you can scroll down and check out. Saving and loading works, if I recall. I don't think uh, clearing works. Mm, playing works. Exiting, I don't think that works. <laughs> that door animation is awesome. <laughs> it just it keeps doing. All right. Anyway, I, I found that funny. All right. Um. Yeah. So you can place blocks. Um. On the grid. You have uh, sloped parts as well. And then you can press P or go to the play button to play. And when you play, you use the arrow keys to move, Z to jump, X to attack. So it's all pretty basic. Um, you can wall slide, if I recall. I'm surprised I, I didn't have uh, that work. Huh. It didn't really work that well. It works better on normal blocks, but corners, for some reason, don't work that well. And so it was uh, going to be kind of a Metroidvania ex exploration game. Um, yeah, so there's a lot of different blocks here, a lot of different kinds. And the whole point of the game was basically that you would make a, game, a level or, or make a world, you know, or download a world and play it. And it might last a few hours just because of the, the volume of uh, possible levels. Each room is... Four, three screens wide and, and three screens tall, something to that effect. And there's currently, um, you can have up to 20 rooms. So it, I think 20 is a uh, arbitrary number too. I'm not bound by like RAM or anything, I don't think. So I could have had like 50 or 100 rooms or, or 500 or something like that. But I just chose 20 for some reason. Just, you know, an arbitrary number. And so the point was that you could play a game, a, a level, and basically, it'd be a full game. Each level you download might be a full game. Just a really long uh, game. And I would basically expand it with content, with items, weapons, textures, backgrounds, things. And I, I'm guessing that, uh, well, something that I also would like to add is uh, NPCs or, or things like that, where you could talk to someone, kind of get a story going. Um, yeah, so let me just show what I have so far. So I have blocks, I have uh, slopes. These are switch blocks. Um, you can wall jump on them, and you can't move through them um, until you have a switch. So, so this is a wall switch. Press up, and you can trigger the switch and turn off the blocks, or turn them on, and you know have them on. Um, this is a floor switch. Stepping on it does the same thing; turns it on and off. So, for example, this is kind of a puzzle. How do you get through without um, stepping off the switch? Well you might have to trigger something to fall on it. So these little uh, squares are link colors. And they basically um, tie the switches and the switchable objects together. So the red floor switch here, the, I'm sorry, the normal floor switch here is red, uh, has a red link color. All red objects, linkable objects, will be turned on or off by the switch. Clicking on the link color will change the uh, link color itself. And as you can see, if you have a link color specified, the last link color you selected will be uh, added, just kind of as a convenience thing. So same thing with the uh, status of the, of the block. Like for example, if I rotate this, have a, a ramp of whatever rotation, each other one I add will have that same rotation. Just an, again, as a kind of convenience Thing. It doesn't work quite as well as it should, but it works okay. 
So this is a yellow switch. It'll turn on this yellow, uh, turn off this yellow block, which will make this ball fall and hit this switch, which will open your gate. And so that kind of thing is like you know, it's kind of the puzzle of the game, the you know ability to have puzzles and things like that. Oh yeah, so uh, right clicking and holding will allow you to make kind of a fill. Um, Kind of do a fill and and add or, or delete blocks. Just left click or right click and hold. And so that works pretty well. W, A, S, and D are moving the camera around. Outside of uh, play mode. In play mode, the camera automatically follows you. Um, let's see. So that's that, that, that. This is ice. Ice blocks can't be wall slid on. Uh, wall jumped off of, I, I guess is the correct term. And they also... Uh, there's no friction, so it's kind of hard to move around on them. You can't. There's not a lot of air control in the game, so you kind of have to really place your jumps well and keep up your momentum. Maybe that's this is where I got the idea for Sparky, actually. And uh, if I were to continue this, maybe Sparky would kind of morph into this instead. Uh, yeah. So this is um, some springs, and so basically, you know, you jump on them, they spring you up and down. Uh, the gravity. Um, can't think of gravity safe. No, the gravity uh, enabled. Right. So you can jump on a switch that's in the air and jump off of it. Or jump between two switches and get kind of glitched out. Um, clicking on it makes it a high powered switch. Uh, high powered spring, I'm sorry. And also, if you put a spring next to um, the ceiling, it'll automatically hold. So you can kind of have these like uh, Sonic style bouncing back and forth situations. Um, these are platforms, moving platforms. If they're flashing, they're on. Uh, that one goes left to right. This one goes up and down. <laughs> that was kind of a bug. Let's see. That's better. Yeah, um, they also can be turned on and off by a switch. I could wall slide off of that. <laughs> um, what else? So that's floor. This is a time switch. So time switches, um, well, obviously they turn things on by time. And so, yeah, it's not that useful. But you can uh, click them and t to change their status, like you can do with these blocks. With pretty much any linkable object, if you select it directly, it'll automatically, uh, you know, you'll be able to change it somehow. So I just change the timing by selecting it. So the amount of white indicates how f uh, fast it will trigger. I think maximum is five seconds and the minimum is half a second. So you can change it and kind of have a more logical, well, a more logical uh, setup. Um, what else? Da, 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 let's see. Oh, right, right. Um, you can tie these switches together to trigger them in sequence. So as you can see, when they're blue like that, when they have a blue arrow, that means that each subsequent switch will trigger after the fir the previous one, and they'll all get their timings from this one. So, uh, as an example, we'll make kind of like a, a road. So it's red, green, red, red. Yeah, I'll just do like this. <laughs> That's a depth issue. <laughs> My mistake. All right, so red, green, red, yellow, green, blue red, yellow, green, blue. And then turn these off. And we'll do it again. And so this is going to be kind of like a, a road that you have to follow. And so we just make this red, yellow, green, and blue. And so they trigger in sequence. Oh. <laughs> yeah, but you can see that this is a uh, you know, there's a little, you could kind of make a Mega Man or or just kind of a general platforming puzzle. And if you combine that with, you know, physics and stuff, this would be uh, kind of cool. Yeah, so anyway, back to what I was doing. Let's see. Da, 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 floor time. Okay, this is a distance switch. So if you're within the radius of that blue uh, circle, then the switch will trigger. And if you're outside of the radius, then it won't. It will de trigger. So this will control turning on that on or off that uh, 
platform. So just move next to it, and it'll turn off. Or the other way, move next to it, and it'll turn on. Yeah, let's see. Uh, the, uh, okay, right. Now this is kind of the bread and butter of this game, and that's the door. The door is really, uh, I, well, I like it. I, I think it's cool. Um, what the door does is it allows you to teleport. So here's the door, and here's another door. Well, we don't have, even have to have another door. Select the door, and then you can pretty much place where you want the uh, door to take, to take you. And when you highlight the door, it'll show you where it will take you uh, like that. And so I'm stuck unless I uh, place another door and move it back. Place the tele uh, position back. And so that works. You can think of it like an elevator or... Yeah, let's do that actually. You can make kind of an elevator um, situation where each door takes you one floor lower. Wait, what? <laughs> oh, this one takes you there, that one takes you there. Okay, yeah. Where each door takes you one floor lower and then the last door takes you up. So I mean, you can have a pretty. I mean, I, I like it. I like this. This, you know, I like. Well, I like the mechanics and stuff. Maybe I was just pleased about figuring a lot of this stuff out <laughs> with Game Maker. Uh, yeah. All right. So you can press Q and E to switch rooms, and when you switch rooms, um, doors can f lead to other rooms as well. So we'll take that as an example. This door will take you us over here, and when we do that, you see the door gets yellow and the highlight, um, the squares are also yellow, so that shows that it goes to a different room. I probably would add a number showing which num which room it goes to as well as the position like it does so that you can have a little more information. But uh, yeah, so this door will take us over here. This door will take us back here. Yeah, so we go from first to second, second to third, third to another dimension, and back to the first. So it works, I, I'm, yeah, it, it works pretty satisfyingly. It's not perfect, but it, it works all right. Um, this is a lock and a key, so we can move the key, for example, somewhere over here. So you go through the cycles, go over, get the key, come back, and then destroy the lock. So you can see that uh, the Metroidvania kind of uh, capabilities are kind of coming through. These are spikes, they don't really do anything uh, directly. If I were to make this again, I would make it so that they would automatically align to the surface that you're pl placing them on, but, you know, whatever. Um, for, for now. For now. Let's see. This is some water. Well, I guess I'll get to that next time. This is waterfall. Uh, a waterfall. And so what a waterfall does is basically it forces you down so you can't make jumps easily. So you're really kind of stuck. If you don't have the waterfalls, you can jump a lot further and higher, obviously. So... You might, for example, be able to un not be able to jump through that unless you tr uh, turn off the waterfalls, which could be yet yet another puzzle. And it would push down; it should push down pretty much any gravity-enabled object. So that might be a puzzle. For example, how do I get this spring up to jump up to this uh, ledge up here? For example, if these waterfalls are forcing it down, well, you, well, you need to figure out a way to turn off the waterfall. So different little puzzles were possible like that. This was um, water, and in water, you move slower. You can't jump as high. Um, just a lot of generally bad things. <laughs> it was not really. Uh, I mean, it works well, but it, yeah, it's well, yeah, it works well. Oh, it was also going to um, have a uh, an oxygen bar, so you couldn't stay under water forever. So this is another puzzle. If you have waterfalls and water, they'll make the water rise. So you might have to figure out a way to turn off the water before you die. <laughs> so that's just an example. Um, what else? These were lasers that you could turn on or off. And so, yeah, you would not You would die in a perfect world where this game was finished. Um, this was gold. You would be able to pick it up to buy things from shops when you... Uh, you know, encounter them in, in the wild of the game. Let's see. Let's clean this up a little bit. Right. Um, this was a this was a ball. <laughs> I guess it's kind of obvious, but it, it is a ball. 
and so it was going to be able to like push you you were going to be able to push it around or different things like that i might do uh i would do that in the future if i could so I'll, anyway, um, what I was going to do is I was going to ask if what people thought about this. And if I were to remake it, I would probably do it in Blender with some nice uh, lighting and things like that. You know, have a be able to pick up flashlight, a, a flashlight, or or have uh, you know more dynamically lit environments, different things like that that Blender would allow me to do a little better. But um, yeah, so that that was this is the you could say the prototype, um, right? So these blocks. Or gold blocks, they'll only disappear if you pick up all of the gold in the room. So you could kind of make like a Pac-Man styled game by having you know enemies that chase you and gold in in a little one cell room, and then uh, you know the gold uh, door be at the end beyond the the gold blocks. Uh, these blocks only disappear if you defeat all the enemies. They work, but there's no enemies in the game right now. Um, I had an enemy coded, but I don't remember why I, I can't find find them anymore. These blocks that look vaguely or well, very much Mario-like, um, they can only be broken by attacking them directly. So, for example, if you don't start off with uh, a weapon, then that would be a a uh, kind of obstacle that you would have to bypass. And so that was uh, okay. Well, <laughs> yeah, that was an obstacle that that could be bypassed if you had the right item, and if not, then you'd have to find it, you know, Metroidvania style. It, these blocks would only be destroyed if you had bombs. Um, these would, uh, these well, that was a bomb. I'm not sure if I'm not sure quite what I was going to do with that because I'm not sure if I was going to push it around or you'd be able to pick it up. This is a these well, these two are text blocks. This was a save station that you could place on the level. This. Uh, this was a fan to blow you around. This was a drain that if the water is touching it, it won't rise any higher. Uh, I think it was going to be per per waterfall. So the more waterfalls, the drain could get overclogged. And so you might have to turn off some waterfalls in order for the drain to... It was, it was, it was kind of uh, kind of deep. If I, I mean, the idea for that. I, I didn't implement it, though. These were allies that were going to help you, follow you around and stuff. These were enemies that were going to fight. And so you could have like a little war kind of uh, thing with a lot of enemies just firing and running and stuff. Um, and that's the gold door. So and then it loops. I didn't fix it. <laughs> so that's the gold door. That would be the end of the level. So yeah, this was um, this was a really interesting game, and I got really pretty far in it. And the idea was that I was going to expand on it and build on it every uh, how often, however, however often with more tiles and enemies, backgrounds and items and interactions. And I still would like to do that. Um, and I, I'm thinking that if I were to re remake it, I would make it uh, in Blender and um, probably do alpha build like Wolfire Games does with their overgrowth game, which is you know really popular or a lot of people seem to like it. So I'm, I'm thinking about that because um, Soldier Of is going really well. It's just, uh, it's gonna take a while. And so I'm wondering if I could squeeze something out a little faster to to help generate some income uh, as a developer, well, in wannabe indie developer. Um, yeah, so that's that's an idea. I just wanted to see if people would be interested in, in playing it, maybe for five dollars or or ten dollars or something like that. So anyway, um, thank you very much for watching. I've been Solar Loon, and uh, if you want to follow development, follow me on Twitter or follow me here on YouTube or my game development blog at Solar Solar Loon Games or wherever. Um, but I appreciate your watching. I've, I have over 600 subscribers. Thank you very much for subscribing and watching my videos. It's really uh, encouraging to see, you know, a lot of people interested in, in, in my projects. Um, yeah, so, well, and, and my tutorials. Thanks uh, for both. All right, so uh, hopefully I'll come back another time with something interesting to uh, show on YouTube as well.